What's up everybody? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Jen and you've made it over here to Copper Cactus DIY. This is my home for all things furniture from makeovers to thrift flips, restorations, and faux finishing. And in today's video, I'm going to be working on this little piece that I've got right here next to me. I'm pretty sure this is a reproduction and not an original antique, but we're going to get into all of that together in just a second. But before we do, don't forget to hit that big ol' red subscribe button right down below and click the bell, that way you'll be here for all of my project uploads. But I'm just gonna get started on this piece right now, assessing what I've got, removing the hardware, and giving it a thorough cleaning. To clean this piece, I'm using a bucket of warm soapy water, clearly my kitchen gloves, and a microfiber rag. Since I started wearing gloves, I'm much happier while cleaning. Prep takes so much time, but it's really key to a great final finish, and cleaning is the most important step of prep. All kinds of gunk can build up and impact your sander or your final finish. I'm using palm olive dish soap, which is an excellent degreaser. I was careful not to drown this piece because I suspected it was constructed from MDF and not wood. And getting MDF wet can cause it to expand, which would have left me in a world of hurt. Actually, no, it would have left me using this as firewood for next week's video. Speaking of, next week I'm taking part in the Cozy Winter Challenge with about 20 YouTube channels. This one is hosted by Carol over at Flipping Drawers, and I can't wait for you all to see what everyone is doing. It's gonna be a total snuggle fest. After cleaning, I got some clean water and a new clean rag and I gave everything a wipe down. Most of the residue came off in the first pass, but I did a second one off camera just to be sure. This is loose. <laughs> the whole thing's a little loose and wobbly. Just see. There's nothing under here except this sticker that actually says made in Taiwan. Can't tell if that's wood. I think it is, but I just think it's crappy pine. And I already know because I did this at the thrift store, but the legs all unscrew. Another sure sign this is not. An antique and yeah I can tell now this is all pine so I'm gonna see if I can get all the legs off get this shelf off I know these unscrew too because again there you go did that in the thrift store I'm just gonna take this thing apart now uh, well before I take it apart actually I'm gonna mark each of the legs and then I'll take it apart and uh, yeah so I grabbed my masking tape and used it to mark each leg and the corresponding corner. In my case, this table has eight total sections that disassemble. I decided to use front, back, top, and bottom as my identifiers. Some people use numbers, but this worked for me. So for example, for the bottom part of the front right leg, I'd mark both pieces with R, F, B. L, B, T for left leg, top section, back location. You get the idea. Like I said, that system worked for me. If you're doing this, I say use whatever works for you, but definitely mark your parts. I wanted to change up the look of this piece a little bit, so I tried to remove the decorative brass piece from the top. The two center screws came out with no problem. I could access them from the back. Fingers crossed, everybody. It's done. Come on. Come on. There we go. Okay, now 
we're gonna see. <laughs> Bummer. You know, everything else is tight. Now I have to get these back on. Great. All right, well, not yet. So this kind of really sucks because I actually wanted to get rid of this, but you know, that's just how it goes in refinishing furniture sometimes. I'm not taking this entire thing apart, which is what I'd need to do in order to access however these are attached, other than these two, obviously. So I'm actually gonna paint it before I reattach this, but I am gonna end up reattaching it, and at least it won't be loose and wobbly anymore. So, you know, that's a plus. I used a 220 grit sanding sheet and went super light over this cabinet. When I say super light, I mean even if I had a surf prep, there's no way I would have used it. Turned out the finish wasn't even veneer, but it was like a multi-coat sprayed on lacquer. It scuffed up so easily, I knew this piece would take paint really well. I wiped everything down with some clean water. To say this thing was gross would be a huge understatement. I actually had to change the water twice while I was wiping it down, and I went back over it a second time just to make triple sure. That is already what the water looks like. While the table pieces dried, I turned my attention to the hardware. I'm cleaning them with a water and white vinegar boil. Originally, I wanted to replace these because it's just thin, cheap brass, but since I'm keeping the top pieces, it seemed smarter to try to just save the original hardware too. I brought the mixture up to a rolling boil, which took about four or five minutes. and I left it to boil for about 10 minutes. I removed the hot metal with metal tongs, and as I took them out, I realized I forgot to remove the screws. I cleaned those off camera with some CLR to remove the rust that had appeared from the vinegar, and then I left them to air dry. To get into these poles, I used a toothbrush, some plain old baking soda, and a bit of the hot vinegar water, plus a whole lot of elbow grease but they were cleaning up pretty nice, so I went with it. So, score! I figured out that you could actually unscrew these brass pieces, the little knob parts, and once you could kind of twist the one in the corner, the, one, the bars came out and then that just made it no problem to untwist the other ones and get those bars out. So you can see here, I'm just sanding them down. So the brass is gonna be my accent color. And I really just wanna kind of sand these down, make them more of like a brushed brass vibe. I think that's gonna look really slick. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna keep on going with this. My next step was to create a custom color. I had a pretty specific color in mind, something like a hazy teal, but really toned down, nothing vibrant. And I'm mixing the color using four of my folk art chalk paints. I'm using Vintage Mustard, Provincial Blue, Java, and Maui Sand. I started at about a 2 to 1 ratio of yellow to blue, but I still think the blue was a bit heavy handed. And there's no way to really take that out once it's there, so I just kept adding Maui Sand and Java, mixing, adding yellow, and mixing more until I got the color that I was going for. I'm pretty sure I have enough to paint this in like three other pieces now. But it's cool, at least I know I'll have enough to coat this piece. Just 
going to use a one and a half inch angled purdy that's kind of destroyed. That way I can just kind of pounce into all of the little grooves and whatnot. I always like to start on the inside if I'm painting there. That way I'm not bumping into the finished edge on the outside. Especially on a small area like this, I'm a million percent likely to bump things. Now, I'm pretty darn good with color mixing, and I know I'm a pretty good painter too, but sometimes, peeps, I'm a horrible YouTuber. but sometimes I'm not. I love the coverage of this paint, but this cabinet will need a second coat. So I finished up and I left everything to dry for about four hours. And I turned to the hardware. I'm using Rust-Oleum Metallic in the color Gold Rush and I'm gonna spray paint these handles. They got one coat and I left them to dry for about four hours before coming back to give a light second coat. I think they look much better now and will definitely better match the brass on top. Like I said, I waited about four hours to put on the second coat. Normally I don't show this because it's usually just the same as the first coat. Kinda boring, but can you believe the difference in this paint color between when it's wet and when it's dry? Comment below which one of these two shades you like better, the lighter or the darker shade. With a solid second coat on everything, I got full coverage. I left everything to dry and cure overnight. So I got all set to do the top coat this morning and I was even gonna film it, set up everything right here and Here's what happened. Oh, it barely even comes out as bad as it actually is in life on camera, but you can see how cloudy and streaky that is. I stopped at the larger decorative part there. I guess I just can't use flat top coat on this paint and that's really unfortunate, but luckily I only got the one leg done. I'm instead going to turn to my Wagner Flexio 3000 and try to spray on some polycrylic. Wish me luck, but you'll know in about two YouTube seconds if it actually works out or not. The air power on the sprayer was just a bit too much and the legs kept falling over. So I ended up holding them up by the screw and kind of spun them around while I was spraying. That actually worked out better than I thought it would. And this top coat played quite nicely with the paint. All I had left to do was the drawers. Then when everything dried, I could put it all back together. My last step was to attach this hardware and this reproduction thrift flip was done.
So what do you think? I'm not sad about how this turned out in the end. Despite the top coat issues, I'm actually quite pleased with the color and the final finish. Leave me a comment and let me know your thoughts. Also, if you're a returning subscriber, thanks so much. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing, liking this video, and leaving me a comment. YouTube loves that stuff, and it'll help my channel to grow, so I would really appreciate it. But that's it for today. Thanks so much for being here and watching. Later, peeps! I got this at the th I think that's all I need. I don't think I need anything else. Maybe you could just um, find a new home, birds, because you're very loud and annoying and interrupting my intro. Okay, great, thanks. Hello. It's cold, it's hot, it's cold, it's hot. Let's just decide what we're doing here. Man, I need a seat. There's the neighbors. What's up, every? Oh, let's definitely knock over the sprayer too. I mean, I'm just—that's that, just happening today, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Oh, you think you're gonna drip, don't you? Okay, no.